You got a gangway. Remote control elevation. The pond, the uh, paddle wheel is actually raises and lowers into the water or out of the water. If it's out of the water not being used, you know, you're not, uh, the water's not getting into the wood. But it is pressure treated wood, triple coated. And an elastomeric paint? Elastomeric roof coating. It's expensive stuff. 75, 70 bucks a five gallon bucket. I custom built this trailer for it too. That used to be just a regular boat trailer. I took all the running gear off and then for the boat to roll up on and just put a basic plywood frame on here that the boat sits on. And you can see the barrels, these are these barrels are quarter inch thick. Have you ever seen one of these cut open? Uh-huh. Where they cut the tops off? You can't hurt these things. They'll last forever. Right. Steel barrels, forget it. Aluminum pontoons, forget it. They corrode. Yep. They create leaks. You can puncture them easily because it's really thin aluminum. These things, you can't hurt them. Each barrel has an air valve so that you can put air in it to make it even more buoyant. Each barrel has an air chuck, I mean an air valve, so you just right. put 20 pounds of air in it. How'd you do that? Just drilled out that plastic hole and put a car tire valve stem in it 18 times. And then what's, it, what's sealing the, the, in there? It's just like on a car tire. The air pressure pushes on the outside, on the inside edge, and it's they're not, they're not going. It's not going anywhere. Wow. The steering is all cable driven. But you can't get these. You have to move them, right? Yeah, the barrels move. See how much room you got here? Uh -huh. All you got to do is get in here with a piece of two by four, and just pry it back, and it slides back. Easy enough. Because there's just... probably twenty pounds in there right now. That's what I put in there before, so it's not, it's all still in there. In fact, as you can see how the barrel's bowed. Bowed right. out. Right. Bowed out. I noticed This thing's got air in it. Especially with the heat hitting it. Right. This is a functioning boat. I rode it one day, put it on the trailer, brought it up here from Sebring. Actually, Lake Placid. Is this like a little trolling motor you got up here? That's reverse. Oh. And auxiliary power. What's your name? Ted. Ted? Yeah. Jazz. I respond to Jazz. Jerry Windsor. I built this boat to be a show-off boat. That's all it can be. Or it could be a water taxi or a hot dog stand on the, on the float. <laughs> hot dogs and hamburgers, sodas. Uh, you put a generator on here and you got a floating money maker. You see? Or you could just power around with the front motor, the little 15 horse outboard. When you see people over on the riverside or the bank of the lake, you get on over there close, you fire up the bike, you drop the paddle wheel into the water, put it in gear, let the clutch out, and putt past the people as they're sitting on the boat taking pictures of you going by. It's a show-off boat. When you're done with them, you shut the bike off, raise the paddle wheel, the engine's still idling in the front, put it in gear, and head on down to the next crowd. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen anything like this on the planet. Ted, there's only one of them, and it's mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> How old is that Harley? It's a 93 FXDL. It's the same bike as I'm riding right now. I had two of them, and I couldn't ride them at the same time. So, uh, 
drivetrain. This is a Harley Davidson rear wheel hub on a one inch cold rolled steel jack axle that's eight feet wide. There's five of these bearings, five of these axle hubs that support the torque system that's involved here. And then on the paddle wheel, here's two more hubs, rear wheel hubs, here and on the other side. So I had to buy Harley Davidson rear wheels, spokes, cut the spokes, ground off the unnecessary metal, and I end up with an aluminum hub with sealed bearings. I mean, it's a, if it's made for Harley Davidson 100,000 miles, those bearings will last forever. Sure. I designed and built that water wheel, that paddle wheel, I mean. I designed this. This is just to mimic the sprocket on the other side. This was a piece of waste aluminum. I was going to take it to the recycler, and then I said, wait a minute. I need something on the other side that looks like the other side. Uh -huh. So I cut this accordingly, and there it is. Both sides have the same scoop effect on the spokes. See that? Right. It looks like it's scooping water. Sure. You know. This underneath intrigues you, doesn't it? Yeah. It's simple. The barrels are going to float. It's hard to push. I'll tell you what, you can't get this underwater. It takes 700 pounds to get that underwater. Times 18. What's that? It's 25,000 pounds, something like that. Yeah, let's see. Tools, calculator. 18 times 700. That's 12,600 pounds. That's six tons flotation rating. That's you know ballpark. It's not gonna go anywhere. These are all four by four studs down here. Yep. Heavy. I mean this you got about as much wood on this rank this trailer as you do on the boat. The fact is, the 4x4s weigh so much that they float, and the first time I put this trailer in the water to put the boat on it for the first time, the trailer floated. <laughs> so you see these two pieces of concrete here, here and over there? I had to put these in to weigh the trailer down to where the wheels would stay on the boat ramp. Questions? Yeah, I'm just, I mean, out of curiosity, I mean, I'm just kind of, I mean, I'm not sure, I mean, you're probably more, you know, you're, you understand engineering better than I do, but, um, I mean, the, the two questions I have is, when you put these beams going across the top, it doesn't, it doesn't appear that they're touching the barrels, and I'm just wondering why. I mean, my my initial assumption would be that the cross beams would be going across, and and that the barrels would be having pressure up against the cross beams. No need to. They're I mean, pushing on the two by tens. Yeah. Those are I, two by tens. Those cross sec, those cross supports. These look are like just these are hold. Actually, I thought those they're were just those. in there to keep vertical the pontoon boards. The, the, the longitudinal boards. Yeah, exactly. That's all they're doing. They're just holding those straight up and down so that the barrels stay in the slot and the cuts of the ends of the two by tens. 
They look like two by sixes to me. No, those are two by tens cut down. Yeah, she floats. She's a neat boat. Got it everywhere I go, even on the highway. People taking pictures of it. Sure. Man. And I have the only one on the planet. The only Harley Davidson powered stern paddle wheeler on the planet. Ain't that cool? <laughs> What's this cable for? That's the steering. Okay. From the handlebars. I steer with the handlebars. I made these. See a quarter inch plate aluminum. And I took a piece of pipe, cut the center out, slid these up in, bolts across through, so that this is gripping that. It's not going anywhere. And they actually run right level with the bottom of the barrels. So all you got to do is just keep out of, I mean, this thing will paddle through seven inch deep water, really. You just got to raise the paddle wheeler up so the paddle wheel up so it's not hitting the sand barge. But this thing will it'll go right through nine inch deep water. Let's say nine inches. This rack here on the back I got off a of boat. It was on its way to the junkyard. And it's perfect. Those four. What are you looking at? <laughs> I had five anchors on it for it, but the kids stole them. Blew out my fire extinguishers. Fucking vandals. Just going on board. Ready to go up? Okay. Ah, shit. Who's got this turn around? I guess it didn't work there. Baby, hey sweetheart, yeah. I don't have a battery in it right now, so I can't start it, but it runs. So this is all storage down here? Yep, oh I got the keys. So there's a seat that goes to it somewhere? Is there what? A seat that goes right there? Yep. Yeah. I think it's inside. That center piece opens up. Bottle opener right here. Not that it's needed. Bottle openers are now obsolete. Don't need them. I had railings on this. I had a canopy on it. This was all covered with a canopy. But it's in the intercoastal waterway now. Blew off? No, what happened was big 200 foot yacht went by and the wake got the boat going side to side and basically just top heavy, just rocked it, rocked it, 
and ripped it out of its foundation. Right there's a repair. Tore it right off, fell off into the water, sank. Wow. Yep. About 350 bucks. What is no it? More than that That's a spare rudder. Spare rudder, yeah. And you got an anchor there too. Yep. Some life vests. Shit, I guess I can open the centerpiece. Another boarding ladder? Uh, yeah, that's the one I had on there before. There's the exhaust. Goes down, turns down, blows right into the water. Straight pipe. It's not loud. It's relatively quiet. How long did it take you to build this? Maybe about 400 hours. Did you build it on the trailer? No. You built the trailer after. I built it on my barge. Huh. I built the main frame and all of this on the barge. So you, if you can picture those the pontoon runners. They're sitting on the deck. The stern of the barge is back there. What I did was I got a winch on the barge and through a pulley, I winched the boat off the back of the barge, strapped those two pontoon, there are two barrels on, winched it some more, two more pontoon barrels, winched it again, two more barrels, Winched it again, put these four in, winched it some more. And and, and and that's in the water. That's now tilting down, getting in the water. I got you. Winched it some more, winched it more, put the barrels in, put the barrels in, winched it more, and it just dropped off into the water. Huh. On the barrels. Wow. Did it all by myself. Nobody else could have done that. A crew of five fucking people couldn't have done what I did by myself. So if, if uh, you were to put the straps on, you'd put them on in the water, you, you would suggest? Just do it in the water. Yeah. Get wet. Staple gun and some of that uh, backyard seat chair strapping. Staple, staple. Go on to the underside. Staple, staple. Just enough to hold the barrels in place. Uh -huh. They're not going anywhere. Uh -huh. The only problem that you got is if the, you hit a wake right. on that front corner or this front corner. Then the boat goes up and then all of a sudden there's no water underneath the front barrel. Mm -hmm. Or the back barrels, uh -huh. if the boat's going this way. All right. So the front two and the back two barrels, those barrels are not coming out of there. Although they're easy to get out, you just got to take that board that you're all on off, and then you just push it with your foot, uh -huh. and it just plumps right out. Huh. Now you got to worry about getting it back in. Right. What you do is you take the two bungs out, fill it with water. Float it up underneath. Put, put the, the bung in with the, the bottom. With, put the bung into the top. Air chuck. Fill it with air. Pumps the water out. Put the bottom bung in. It's in position. It's that easy. Hmm.